When learning a new skill, it is always helpful to sort of mix up the different ways you learn or the different resources you learn from or types of content you consume about it. So for example, here at Songwriter Theory, of course, I have videos that I make. I also have the Songwriter Theory podcast, which is really what started all of this. We're on like episode 142 as of recording this video. And there is also the blog, so there's written content. So another way to learn things, of course, our books. So this is the second book review or book that I'm going to talk about. I've actually talked about Pat Patterson's Writing Better Lyrics book, which is also a phenomenal book. And the book we're going to be talking about today is Popular Lyric Writing, 10 Steps to Effective Storytelling by Andrea Stolpe. It is a phenomenal book. I actually read this book in about a day and a half, I was on vacation, and basically every moment that I wasn't doing vacation things for the first day, and not really even a half, I think I was done by like 10 o'clock the next morning, was reading this book. It is really, really good. One of the, one of the things I really enjoy about this book is that, as you can see, it is not a thick book. I don't know how many pages it was, uh, only like 139 or so pages, which is awesome because I don't know about you, but for me, I really, really hate when I pick up a book and I feel like the author just sort of stuffed the pages with a bunch of crap that I don't need, or they give you like 500 different examples of the same thing uh, so that they could make the book 300 pages. That's a common complaint that I have with books that I read. They often feel like they could have been 20 or 30 pages or at least 100 pages or so and given me all the information I needed and just wasted less of my time. This book does that. Thank you, Andrea, for that. I also appreciate that it's broken down into 10 steps. Any of you who have been here before probably know that I have a lyric writing checklist that breaks down lyric writing into six steps. So I'm a huge fan of any time that you can break something down into tangible steps that are easy to teach and do instead of it sort of just being this random process that's out there that's like, just write lyrics. Like, what do you mean just write lyrics? That's a huge project to do. She actually breaks it down into 10 steps, which I really, really appreciate. And I think overall, she really nails the balance between the art and the science of creativity, because I think sometimes people lean too far in either direction, right? You can't just randomly generate lyrics with a computer or anything. There's no like formula to use with songwriting, but that doesn't mean that there can't be processes and steps to go through. You can still systematize in some ways your lyric writing so that you get good results more efficiently and so that you're not just in the wild, wild west of just doing whatever you want and eventually a lyric pops out and it's kind of okay and good, but you don't know how to get it from okay and good to really, really good. So breaking it down into steps, making it both, you know, keeping it an art, but also making it a bit of a science is something that I truly appreciate and as a software developer, as well as a songwriter, I really, really appreciate that because I love systems. People fail systems, well, good, good systems generally don't. Um, and I think that the system she provides here is really, really good. Let's talk about some of the things that I personally took from the book, and then I'll talk about a few other things that I really love about the book. So one of the things that I learned that I really had not ever thought of before is the toggling between and just the existence of internal versus external information. So first let's address internal versus external. This is just talking about lines of a song or you know lines of a lyric that external is something that is more objective, right? It's something that is happening. We're talking about how the sun is setting, for example. That's an objective, true thing that is happening outside of me. But something else we can talk about is internal details, right? This is usually about thoughts and feelings of the character of the song. So while of course, naturally in our songwriting, I'm pretty sure all of us integrate both of those two things. We usually are talking about, here's the area I'm in, right? Like I'm sitting at the ocean, I'm looking at this, or you know, I'm looking into your eyes and you have blue, beautiful eyes, or you know, whatever it is. But we also talk about our thoughts and feelings. So that naturally arises. But something that she brought up in this book is the toggling pattern aspect, where you actually sort of have a pattern of external versus internal details. So for example, in a verse that maybe has 
uh, let's say four lines, you would have something where you go from two external details and then you do two internal details. And then the second verse follows that same pattern where you know you're starting with external, more objective details. And then maybe those last two lines really start to bring it in, make it personal and talk about your thoughts and feelings. That is something I really hadn't thought of before, but honestly is one, one of the fa my favorite things that I got from this book. I thought it's really awesome. I already started to use it and honestly, I just read this book. Uh, I finished it, I guess, probably a week ago or a little over a week ago now. Um, and I've already started to utilize many of the tips in this book, but that is one of the main ones that I'm like, I have to do that. That's something that I think can be really, really helpful. Another thing that I learned and really got from this book was destination writing. So I am a fan of object writing from Pat Patterson, but in this book, she actually sort of does her own twist on object writing that I like even better. So object writing generally is talking about a specific object. And if you don't know what object writing is, feel free to either Google it, or I'll probably put a link in the description to a video where I talk about object writing because I do think it's really helpful. But her version of object writing, which she calls destination writing, I think is even more helpful and is closer to what I actually already naturally did. I sort of took Pat Patterson's concept of object writing and then decided to do it just with me talking in prose about specific things or places or people instead of just an object, which didn't resonate with me as much because, well, for object writing, the purpose is to sort of practice and get good at diving deep into your senses, which is great, it's very helpful, but it's a little less helpful for actually starting to write a song. Destination writing is actually meant to really be the foundation of what your song becomes. So it tends to be about writing about a place, so a where, or about a person, or about a time, rather than just an object. So while you know, a camera, for example, for object writing, is probably not something that's going to turn into a song, something that might turn into a song is talking about, for example, your grandmother's house before she passed away, and you're visualizing the house, and you're talking about it, and the smell of the cookies she's making, or whatever. That is something that's gonna give you visceral details that can become a song. She talks about that in here. Also, something really cool about that is how she utilizes that to actually directly get lines for the songs from the prose that you write in destination writing. It's really, really cool. Uh, I don't really have time to explain all that here. Again, I just recommend picking up the book. I think it was really cheap too, 10, 15 bucks or something like that on Amazon. Uh, again, I'll leave a link in the description so you can look for yourself. Don't take my word for it, whatever the price is, the price is, but well worth it for this book. And the last big tip I got from this book is kind of related to the destination writing, but when she talked about the importance of where in a song. Now back to Pat Patterson's book, which again is also phenomenal. He talks about how when you sort of have an image that starts, that image sort of colors the rest. So you always want to start with something that tends to be very image based so that people have something to visualize and then you sort of give it context. But in this case, she goes one step further and really talks about the setting and thinking about where the song is taking place, which is really taking that visual element one step further. That's something that just really resonated with me about early in the song, establish where, what, and all that sort of stuff so that people know exactly what the song is about, but also where it's taking place. It really helps them to visualize because a what isn't something that you can visualize as much or why isn't something that you can visualize as much, but you can visualize a where, especially if it's described well. I thought that that was something that certainly was also really helpful. Other things I really appreciate about this book that I think make this an awesome book and confirm how awesome Andrea is, in my opinion anyway, um, but I didn't put in the three things I learned because, well, I already did know them. In fact, some of these things are things I teach, so I'm a little biased because I'm like, yes, she, she, aff she affirmed the thing that I say. Um, but, but one of those things is how she talked about don't force a rhyme. If you're a podcast listener, you may or may not know. The third episode ever of Songwriter Theory, I talked about you don't have to rhyme. And she talks about this here. Uh, I took it maybe a little more extreme than she does because her main point is just don't force perfect rhymes, not necessarily don't force rhymes at all, which is basically what I was saying in that podcast as well. But I took it one step further that I don't think it necessarily needs to rhyme at all, which if you're interested in my take on that, go check out that third episode of the Songwriter Theory Podcast. But anyway, she talked about that in this book, and I think that that is a phenomenally important 
thing to say to people because that is something I notice is a big problem, especially with new songwriters. It's just eye roll worthy rhymes and sacrificing good lyrics in order to get an arbitrary rhyme, which is never a good idea. And she has a whole section where she talks about that, which is awesome. Something else she talks about in this book that I think is really important is Phrasing. Phrasing is something that's so important to think about when songwriting. I think it can be taken for granted, but she does not skip over that or take it for granted. She takes the time to talk about it. And another thing I really appreciate about this is, as you know from me, if you've ever gotten the six step lyric writing checklist that I have or listened or watched a lot of my content, I do talk a lot about the importance of utilizing the tool of a thesaurus in your songwriting, especially when it comes to what I call uh, iterative lyric editing or iterative lyric writing, which I believe is step five of my six step lyric checklist. But uh, the thing I talk about there is going so far as to look at your song, find the words that just don't do it for you, that are just sort of boring or are not as visceral and, and as emotive as you would like them to be. For example, you know, say, take the word love. The word love can mean a ton of different things. It might mean, you know, I love my dog, I love my wife, I love my mother, and I love ice cream, and I love brownies and I love Star Wars, and I love The Office, right? Those are all very, very different types of love. Love is a very generic word in the English language, whereas if I say something like adore, that is much more specific, right? I don't adore The Office. I don't adore Star Wars. As much as I love those things, I don't adore them. Um, but I do adore my wife, for example. So that's a better word. And that's just one thesaurus search away, right? Go to a thesaurus, this thesaurus.com. Amazing, amazing tool. It's free, right? It's just thesaurus.com can be really helpful. She talks about using a thesaurus in this book, which is something else that I think is so, so important. So be sure to check out this book. Highly recommend it. Um, again, I cannot, I, re I really can't say enough good things about this book. Just the fact that she balanced sort of the art and the science is something that I really, really, really love because I find that creatives oftentimes aren't very good at finding that balance. Um, and there, there really is a balance there, right? Because we are artists, but sometimes some level of system and process is, is sort of what, what gives some rhyme to the madness. And she conquers that with, I mean, 10 steps, right? It's 10 steps. She's breaking it down into a process. Something I really like doing and something that I think is really helpful in general when you're trying to improve at something is sort of get a bunch of different perspectives and then from there figure out what works for you. So for example, I don't know that I'm going to use every single one of these 10 steps. I'm probably gonna borrow from some of these steps. I'm probably going to adapt some of these steps, which is really the purpose of this book, right? I don't think she's telling you, do these 10 steps exactly and don't break from it, right? Do the 10 steps, try them out, figure out how they work for you, keep the ones that work for you. If maybe some don't work for you, then of course the way to go is to just adjust them, right? And that's what I certainly plan to do. I have my six step lyric writing checklist. This of course is 10 steps. So I fully plan on sort of taking that six steps that I currently do, take a look at these 10 steps, figure out maybe where there's room to insert these into the six steps, which of these steps are most helpful that really address something that I maybe don't address in those six steps. And that's something that you should do as well because that is the best way to really learn anything, getting different perspectives, bringing them all together, and then figuring out what works for you from the different tips that you're getting. So I hope this video was helpful to you, especially if you were on the fence about buying this book or not. I hope you do. I think it's a really, really great buy. Definitely worth your time for sure, and definitely worth your money as well. Something really, really helpful. And hopefully you got some lyric writing tips along the way as well. As I mentioned before, be sure to check out my six step lyric writing checklist as well. The best thing you can do, I think, is to take that, learn from that, read that, but also grab this book, which will give you 10 different steps and try to figure out which steps work for you. I don't think you need to commit to my exact six steps. I don't think you need to commit exactly to these 10 steps either. I think they both have different strengths and weaknesses. And of course they can be combined as well. Figure out what works for you from what others have done and what works for them. Because at the end of the day, I'm me. Andrea Stolpe is Andrea Stolpe and you are whatever your name is. So that is my recommendation to you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you and I'll talk to you in the next one.